Hello, welcome to CADM CNC Gyan Online. This talk is part of a series of lectures on CNC machining from CADM Technologies. You may be a teacher in a technical institution, you may be in industry on the shop floor, you may be an entrepreneur, whatever your role. These lectures are designed to quickly give you basic knowledge of CNC machining, which you can then build upon. This set of eight videos simplify the complex area of CNC technology. These lecture videos extensively use CADM's multimedia CNC education software to bring the shop floor live on your screen. Happy learning. In this lecture, I will be talking about the construction of CNC leads. You will see that they are very similar to conventional manual leads and are very easy to understand. The bed of a CNC lathe can either be a flat bed or a slant bed. This is a flat bed and you can see the chuck, the turret for holding tools, the cross slide, the tail stock. This is a slant bed. Its benefit over the flat bed are that everything is closer to the operator, there is better visibility and chips slide down to the bottom automatically. These guideways are sliding guideways like the ones on conventional lathes. Because of sliding friction, they require higher power to move the parts and wear out faster. Most CNC lathes nowadays use linear motion guides or LM guides. They have rolling friction because of balls inside them like ball bearings. They require less power to move parts and have a longer life. CNC lathes have ball screws instead of lead screws. Lead screws have sliding friction and so you need more power to move the machine parts. Ball screws have rolling friction like ball bearings and so require less power and have a longer life. This is how ball screws are fixed on the machine. You can see the ball screw, the nut and also the LM guides. This animation shows how a ball screw works. You can see the balls circulating in the nut as it moves actually. This is what it looks like when it is in motion on a machine. This is the cut section view of the ball screws nut. This is the automatic tool changer called the turret. You can usually mount 8 or 12 tools on it and on some machines up to 24 tools. Tool change time is usually 1 or 2 seconds. You can see that a variety of tools are mounted on it. Boring bars, turning tools, grooving tools. Tool changing is done through the program. This is a gang type tool changer. It is used on low cost machines for turning simple parts that require only a few tools, maybe up to four or five tools. This is the chuck. It is usually a three jaw self-centering chuck operated hydraulically. You press a foot pedal to open and close it. The chuck can also be opened or closed through the program. The steady rest is operated hydraulically. Like on a conventional lathe, you use a steady rest for very long parts that bend in the middle during cutting, even if you're using a tailstock. The steady rest can be opened or closed through the program or through a switch on the machine. The tailstock has a body that can be moved and bolted manually in any position depending on the length of the job. The part of the tailstock that goes in and out and has a center is called a quill. The quill can be moved in and out through program commands or through a switch. We saw the main mechanical parts of the machine. We'll now see the electrical parts. The brain of the CNC lathe is the controller. It is a powerful computer that is like a PC 
and in many cases it is an industrial grade PC. It has an operator interface as the front and at the back end it controls the various parts of the machine based on the CNC program or on switches operated by the operator. The controller sends signals to a device called the programmable logic controller or the PLC to operate the tool changer, switch on and off the coolant pump, open or close the chuck and so on. It sends commands to the spindle motor drive to start and stop the spindle and control its speed. It also sends commands to the axis motor drive to move the axis motors that control the axial and radial motions of the cross slide. This is the electrical panel of the machine. The yellow boxes you see here are the controller, PLC and drives for the spindle and axis motors. Below are the various connectors, relays and circuit breakers that are required for transmitting electrical signals to the various parts of the machine. On a manual lathe, our brain is the controller. As we move the tool using the hand wheels, our brain is also continuously checking the tool's position and makes corrections to move the tool to the required end position. The CNC controller has a similar motion control loop. When it sends a command to an axis motor to move to a certain position, it continuously gets feedback from a position sensor on the axis and makes corrections so that the tool goes to the correct end position. This is called a feedback loop. There is a similar feedback loop for the spindle speed and for coordinating the tool motion and RPM in threading. The operator console is where the operator enters the program does various manual operations for setting the part and starts and stops the program execution. It has a display, a keypad and switches for manual operations. This is how a program is entered through the keypad. The keypad has numbers, alphabets, special characters like decimal point, keys for inserting and deleting characters, etc. The spindle motor is a special type of motor called the servo motor in which the speed and position can be controlled accurately. Attached to the motor is a feedback device that senses the speed continuously and also gives feedback in threading operations. The maximum speed of the spindle motor on most lathes is 4500 rpm. The axis motor too is a servo motor with a feedback device for speed and position. The controller gives an electronic command to the axis drive which rotates the motor. The feedback device connected to the motor senses the speed and position and the controller makes corrections based on this feedback. Here the red colored motor is the axis motor for the longitudinal traverse. It is connected to the ball screw and the nut of the ball screw is connected to the cross slide. These are the key messages from this lecture. These are the topics that we covered in this lecture. I hope you found this talk useful. If you have any questions about CNC machining, please call me on the CNC Gyan helpline.